choose to go to the moon. Lift off on Apollo 11. The Eagle has landed. That's one moral test for man, one giant leap for mankind. I'm David Curley at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum where we are marking 50 years since man landed and walked on the moon in a lander just like this one. We are going to show you some of the actual ABC News coverage from 50 years ago during that eight day mission of this remarkable achievement. The goal was landing a man on the moon and returning him safely. But geologists really wanted to know about the beginning of the universe. They wanted rocks, they wanted dust from the moon to study. So the astronauts went out into the desert to practice what kind of rocks they should pick up. ABC News correspondent Sam Donaldson with that story from 50 years ago. Who will actually land on the lunar surface are here in the Quitman Mountains of West Texas, about 85 miles from El Paso, to practice the techniques they will use when they go rock hunting on the moon. The lunar landscape may look something like this. There will be no yucca or sagebrush, of course, but the rocks here are of volcanic origin and are distributed on the surface in much the same way as constant meter bombardment may have distributed moon gravel. The astronauts have been taught geology in the classroom and on field trips, for they must be able to identify different formations and minerals in order to bring back the widest range of moon rock samples. Each of the two astronauts who land on the moon's surface will carry geologist tools, a tong, a pick, a scoop, and a 50-pound sample bag. The individual sample is first placed in a plastic bag, then into the larger sample bag. They do not stoop down here, but use tongs to pick up rock, because in a spacesuit on the moon, an astronaut cannot stoop very well at all. Neil Armstrong, the lunar module commander, describes the way the astronauts will select the individual samples. Well, in general, we would expect the, the individual samples will, will be relatively small because uh, we don't have very much volume, less than 100 pounds, and uh, if we are to bring back very many types, we'll have to restrict the, the amount of each type to a small quantity. However, the objective is not to bring back all the possible types that we can, but rather to bring back uh, a representative sample of the surface uh, particles in the area of the lunar landing site. And that means that we'll be bringing back some, some dirt and some dust, like we see here in, in the, on the ground in West Texas, and some of the samples of <clears throat> rock types, should there be any, uh, that are on the surface there also. We're trying to be picking these things out uh, in proportion to their their uh, population on the surface of the moon and also to identify things of, of atypical or abnormal interest uh, on, the loon, on the lunar surface that we're able to uh, pick up. Buzz, what do the geologists tell you they may be able to determine from the samples you bring back? Well, I think uh, they'll be able to uh, <clears throat> determine uh, many characteristics that uh, would describe the uh, formation of the surfaces of the moon, uh, depending on the various types of uh, rocks and how, uh, how they happen to be in position when we see them. I think with a uh, very detailed uh, laboratory-type analysis of the rocks, they'll be able to tell uh, much more of the exact conditions uh, that existed when these were formed.